Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Feed Your Brain. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of quantum mechanics, so let's get right into it. When you shrink something down, eventually you'll reach an atom. An atom is composed of three particles called hadrons. These particles are protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are in the center of the atom and they form the nucleus, while the electrons orbit the center of the atom. For simplicity's sake, they don't actually orbit the center, but let's just say that they do. Electrons stay orbiting the center of the atom via the electromagnetic force. Now there are four types of forces in the universe, and these are gravity, electromagnetism, the strong interaction, and the weak interaction. But the ones that we're going to be focusing here are the electromagnetic force and the strong interaction. Particles called photons carry the electromagnetic force via electromagnetic radiation. And via the photons, electrons stay sort of bonded to the rest of the atom and, well, the electrons stay bonded to the rest of the atom. Protons and neutrons are also bonded with the electromagnetic force via the photon, of course. But protons and neutrons themselves are made of even smaller particles called quarks. And these are believed to be the smallest things that exist in the universe. Now, there are two main types of quarks, up and down. Quarks make up protons and neutrons. Protons have two up quarks and one down quark while neutrons have two down quarks and one up quark. The quarks are connected via another particle known as the gluon, which carries the strong interaction. Gluons and the strong interaction are said to be one of the strongest things in the universe. If you se try to separate two quarks, you won't do it because if you, the more force you use to separate the quarks, the more force that the quarks use to try to stay connected. And if you do somehow separate the quarks, they just form new connections. Now, the electron, photon, and gluon are all special particles known as elementary particles. Protons and neutrons are what are known as composite particles. There are other types of composite particles, but these are the main two that we're going to be focusing on today. Elementary particles are categorized in what's known as the particle zoo. The particle zoo in consists of three sort of divisions, quarks, leptons, and bosons, or bosons, however you want to say it. The quarks are made of the previously mentioned up and down quarks, as well as top, bottom, charm, and strange quarks. Leptons include the electron, the muon, and the tau, or tauon, and also includes their associated neutrino. And the bosons include the photon, the gluon, the W and Z bosons, which carry the weak interaction, and also the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson was discovered by scientists trying to find out what gives particles their mass. These particles are only excitations of what are known as quantum fields. There are many of these fields in the universe, and when it gets excited, or when an excitation happens, that results in a particle. This is known as quantum field theory and is one of the main leading theories of quantum mechanics. In quantum field theory, it is also said that particles um, are actually points. Even though that we know that they're not, if we treat them as such, it's our math and calculations work better than if they're not. Let's say we have an electron with spin and an electric charge. That electron is a zero dimensional point. Think about it like this. So there's four dimensions, length, width, depth, and time. Three dimensions, length, width, and depth. Two dimensions, length and width. One dimension, length or width. And zero dimensions, which is just basically a geometric point. And that's what these elementary particles are basically treated as. However, we know that that's, that that's not true. And there's another theory that actually explains what they might really be. This theory is string theory, and we'll talk about string theory later in the video. 
However, the standard model is not compatible with everything, such as Einstein's general theory of relativity and also his special theory of relativity. In other words, it's not compatible with gravity. Gravity is actually entirely left out and it's actually a big mystery still to scientists. Unless, of course, you're watching this in the future where they may have already discovered gravity and fit it into the model, and in which case I, I just sound really dumb. Now, the reason why is, is that general relativity says that gravity is a different type of force. Unlike the electromagnetic radiation or the electromagnetism that photons carry, the strong interaction which the gluons carry, and the weak interaction which the W and Z bosons carry, gravity doesn't have a particle that carries the force. Rather, it is the geometry of space-time itself. Now, this sounds alright and everything, but there is a big problem. You see, particle physics has a very strict basis in which you can never exactly know what's happening. Basically, let's say you want to measure the properties of an electron. You can't, because electrons are, well, elementary particles, as previously said, and these particles cannot be viewed at, at all because the photons of light that we use to see them doesn't actually, well, touch them. It just goes over them or under them or it's just through the sides. And because of this problem, even though we can make very accurate depictions of, let's say, an atom, we cannot make accurate depictions of, say, a Taiwan neutrino. The name of this problem is the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. And it's pretty much the base, the basis of the entirety of the standard model and particle physics. However, with gravity being the geometry of the universe, you have to measure things with absolute precision. Absolute precision is impossible with particle physics, and that's why general relativity and particle physics are incompatible. When scientists tried to add a graviton, a new particle that carries gravity, their theory did not work, and a lot of their mathematics just became all jumbled numbers. However, not that long ago, a theory was proposed known as string theory. It basically says that all elementary particles are made out of strings. Imagine them this way. You have a violin, and you're playing it and everything, and different vibrations give you different notes. And with these strings, you can, you know, play some tunes. The strings in string theory are very similar, where different vibrations of the string give you different elementary particles. Now there's a lot of other stuff, such as extra dimensions and parallel universes, but that's other stuff for other videos. Now string theory didn't solve everything, but it did give us sort of some clues to basically the theory of everything. So, even though we don't know how everything works, this is a pretty good depiction on how it does. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, then leave a like, and if you like my channel, then subscribe and turn on notifications. That'll be it. I'm Nick, and my goal is to feed your brain. So you may be wondering, this has nothing to do with quantum mechanics. Well. You're wrong. His name is Neutron.